There are many ingenious and innovative ways to generate electricity. Today we'll take a look at the Wave Energy Machine, the Earth Power Machine, and much more. Here are the top 15 most incredible machines that generate electricity. Number 15. Wave Energy With increasing demand for energy around the world, countries have had to come up with novel solutions to generate enough to satisfy their economy's needs and are faced with the challenge of whether to use traditional power stations or come up with something entirely new that makes use of other resources at their disposal. In 2009, Brazil launched a research and development initiative to look at the potential of harnessing the power of the oceans, and the result was one of the most effective wave power generators on Earth. Built on the waterfront at Porto do Pacem in São Gonçalo do Amarante, it consists of two modules. The first is a floater, branch, and pump that sits on the surface of the ocean and moves with the waves. And the second is the turbine, generator, and hyperbaric chamber unit that converts this motion into electricity. The first version was capable of producing a constant 50 kilowatts of energy. And without the need for fuel, it's much easier to run, with the only costs involved being those for maintenance. It's hoped that, based on this proof of concept, further machines like this can be installed that could potentially be far more efficient and one day provide a significant proportion of the country's total power requirements, and crucially, in the process, producing no pollution whatsoever. Number 14. Human Heat Scientists around the world are looking for new types of fuel that can be used to power the next generation of energy plants, but it seems as one of the most useful sources have been around us all along. In 2011, the designers behind Stockholm Central Station announced a radical plan whereby they would harvest the heat being created by the commuters that pass through and use it to warm a nearby building. Instead of cooling the station's hallways when they get too hot during rush hour, they're instead fitted with heat exchangers which use the excess warmth to heat up water, and this in turn is pumped into another building and used in its heating system. This was the first proof that human heat could be used in this manner, and the possibilities of how it can be adapted are endless. Other projects around the world are now using similar designs to heat water, which is then used to drive turbines to create electricity, and while it doesn't produce enough to be fully relied upon, busy public buildings that use it are thought to be potentially able to reduce their reliance on traditional energy sources by as much as 25%. Number 13. SFD Recycling System Humans create huge amounts of waste, most of which is sealed within landfills around the world in a way that makes it the problem of future generations. But there's a company in Japan that's found a way to harness the energy contained in one common type of waste, used diapers. Known as an SFD recycling system, the machines are able to shred, dry, and sterilize the material to produce fuel pellets that can either be used to power boilers and stoves, or on a larger scale, be used as fuel and power plants to produce electricity. In one hospital in Tokyo, two of these machines processes 400 pounds of used diapers per day, and the pellets that are produced are being used to power some of their generators. While it might seem like a small-scale operation, adult diaper use around the world is steadily increasing due to the aging populations in many countries. And in Japan alone, more than 5 billion diapers are sold each year. You can just imagine how much waste that accounts for if it was simply buried in the ground. And machines like this provide a way to make use of something that's otherwise considered to be absolutely worthless. Number 12. Jellyfish with improving technologies, particularly in the medical sector, researchers are constantly innovating and trying to design groundbreaking devices that can improve the lives of millions of people. When it comes to treatments for illness, one area of investigation is that of nano devices, those that are so small that you can hardly even see them, but could potentially travel through our bodies and target specific areas. One of the problems they face, though, is finding a way to power these tiny objects, but a team from Sweden has come up with a solution. They found that a particular substance called green fluorescent protein, or GFP, is ideal for making biofuel cells. When a drop of it is placed onto aluminum electrodes and an ultraviolet light is shown onto it, a small electrical current is formed that's enough to power nano devices. Incredibly, the fuel needed for this process, the GFP, is the substance that's found inside Aquaria victoria jellyfish. That's what makes them bioluminescent. It's a species that's commonly found around the North American coast and, in some places, is regarded as a pest because of the large blooms that they form. But researchers don't plan on catching and liquidizing them forever. They hope that by studying the protein, they'll be able to genetically engineer bacteria to produce it in a controlled setting, and this will provide all the GFP they need. Number 11. Dance Moves if you found yourself perfecting the latest dance moves recently, then you might be pleased to hear that your efforts may prove to be more worthwhile than simply giving you a video to upload to a smartphone app. 
Club Watt in Rotterdam has a one-of-a-kind dance floor that actually converts the motion of people on it into electricity, which is used to power the club's lights and sound system. The technology known as a sustainable dance floor is made up of multiple modules, and each one is able to generate as much as 25 watts, but with improvements, it's hoped that the devices will be able to produce much more. They're able to do this because they're made up of piezoelectric materials, which generates a slight electric charge when pressure is exerted upon them. The constant movement of people on top of them sustains this charge, which is collected by a generator and channeled into the club's electrical supply. Of course, this completely relies upon the DJ playing the right tunes to keep people on the dance floor. So for the moment, the club is a backup supply for times when the floor isn't producing enough. But the technology could soon be used all around us. The U.S. Army is exploring whether it can be used in a soldier's boots to power radios and portable devices. And there are studies taking place to look at the viability of incorporating these materials into the construction of roads to help power streetlights and signs. Number 10. Vertical Wind Turbine There's such a focus on the development of green technologies around the world thanks in part to global climate agreements that have been signed by virtually every nation on Earth. The governments have been doing everything they can to improve their green credentials. One of the most common types of renewable energy production you'll see anywhere are wind turbines. And they often take up huge amounts of space with futuristic-looking propellers that have to be turned towards the wind so they rotate. The windmill-like design that we're so used to seeing isn't the only way to harness the power of the wind, however. And recently, developers have been looking at different ways of going about it with machines called vertical wind turbines. Instead of having to be huge with blades and the need for technology to keep them pointed at the wind, these turbines can be spun by wind from any direction. Their main components, such as the generator, are in the base that makes them much easier to maintain, and even small versions can prove to be effective. While these types of turbines are still in their infancy, it's thought that they could soon be used in a range of settings, such as along roads where they'll be spun by the drafts created by cars on top of homes in windy regions as an alternative to solar panels and virtually anywhere else you could think of putting them. Number 9. Gym Equipment For those of us who like to keep fit, gyms provide the perfect environment to work out across a variety of machines. You'll be more than familiar with the displays on the treadmills and exercise bikes that measure the number of calories that you burn. But normally, this is just energy that's lost to the environment as heat. This may not be the case for much longer, though, because companies have begun finding ways to convert your efforts into usable electricity, which can, in many cases, provide a lot of the power that the gym needs to operate. Various equipment manufacturers now offer models that can be plugged into the power supply, but instead of taking electricity to operate the displays, they instead add it into the system to help power the lights and music. It's not just new devices that can do this, either, because adaptive modules can be used to retrofit older designs, too usually take the form of black boxes that are connected to the exercise equipment and contain generators that are spun by the motion of the wheels of a bike. The energy output from each machine is quite small, but when there are enough people working out at the same time, the savings can soon build up. Soon, it will almost certainly become a common sight at gyms around the world and might help you feel like you're being productive while pedaling furiously on a stationary bicycle. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Nuclear Diamond Battery Since the first electricity was created in a nuclear reactor in 1948, the technology has been heralded as one of the most efficient and environmentally friendly ways of creating power on a large scale. Aside from the risks of a meltdown and contamination and the huge costs involved in building nuclear power stations, there is one nasty byproduct that they produce, nuclear waste. This has to be stored carefully because it can take tens of thousands of years to break down and become safe. But recent research have found that there's actually a way that the waste graphite blocks can be used to generate electricity too. Known as a nuclear diamond battery, or beta voltaic cell, they contain a small core of what was previously considered to be nuclear waste and surrounded by artificial diamonds. Recently, a startup company from California has claimed to have designed a working version of one of the batteries, and they believe it can continue producing a small electrical current for up to 28,000 years. Because the radioactive element, which itself is made up of carbon-14 diamonds, is contained within such tough insulation, these batteries emit less radiation than the human body, so are theoretically safe to be used on a day-to-day -day basis in products such as smartphones, cars, even pacemakers. If it becomes possible to build these batteries for an affordable price, it could mean the end of needing to charge any of our devices ever again. Number 7. Onion Power Plant 
Gill's Onions is one of the largest onion processors in the U.S., but when they process the vegetables, they produce a significant amount of wastes, something that they've now begun to reuse in a way that actually produces electricity. When an onion is peeled, around 35 to 40 percent of it is removed before reaching the part that's used. This remaining material would traditionally have been composted or thrown away, but now, before that's done, it's shredded. This releases huge amounts of onion juice, around 30,000 gallons a day, and while there's no commercial demand for the substance, its high sugar levels mean that bacteria thrive on it. At the factory, they therefore feed the liquid into vats of bacteria, and as they digest the sugars, they release methane gas that is then pumped into two 300 kilowatt fuel cells, which generates enough power for the equivalent of 460 homes. By doing this, the company has been able to generate almost 40% of its total energy requirements, and now saves $700,000 a year on its energy bills. $400,000 a year on the haulage costs for disposing of the onion juice and has reduced its annual greenhouse gas emissions by an estimated 30,000 tons. Number 6. Compressed Air Energy Storage If our energy requirements were constant throughout the day, then companies responsible for providing electricity would have a far easier job than they currently do. The reality is that there are peaks and troughs in consumption, with much higher volumes of electricity being needed during the day for the operation of factories, technologies at home, and all of the devices that we use when we're awake, and just a fraction of that being needed at night. This means that there's an oversupply in terms of the capacity for producing electricity at certain times of the day, and this is the opportune moment to store the excess, which means it can be added back into the power grid when demand suddenly increases. One way to do this is by using batteries, something that's extremely expensive to do, but there are alternatives, such as compressed energy storage. The idea behind it is simple. A facility contains high-pressure pumps and generators, and when there's a surplus of energy, the pumps are used to compress air into an underground cavity, where it's kept at high pressure. When demand for electricity increases, the compressed air is gradually released into the turbines, which generate electricity that can be used instantly. There's virtually no loss of electricity when this is done properly, and there are even situations when more power can be produced as a result because of underground movements that further increase the pressure the air is being kept at. Novel ways of storing energy like this are becoming more and more common, and will allow energy companies to adjust their capacity to demand much quicker than they are currently able to do. Number 5. Earth Engine The one problem that every electricity generator design faces is how efficient it is. The burning of fuels produces heat and light, which is, in effect, lost energy that could have become electricity, and even the most efficient methods lose a lot during the process. The holy grail, therefore, is to create a machine that's able to generate electricity without the need for fossil fuels, that doesn't require combustion, that doesn't produce any heat, and if the claims of an astrophysicist who studied at MIT are to be believed, we might be much closer to realizing this than most people realize. Dennis Danzig has built several machines that he calls Earth Engines that are essentially large arrays of magnets. By alternating the strength of the poles of some of the magnets, the machine is able to harness an effect called asymmetrical magnetic propulsion, which allows it to continue rotating and, in the process, generate around 25 kilowatts of mechanical energy, which can in turn be turned into electrical energy. The team behind the machine admits that it's in its early stages, so quite how long it'll be able to continue spinning on its own isn't exactly clear. It is, however, the closest anyone has got to creating a perpetual motion machine. And even though it's highly unlikely that this method has broken the fundamental laws of physics to create energy from nothing, it's definitely a massive step towards the development of individual power generators that mean we won't have to be connected to a grid, because each one of these can, in theory, produce enough energy to power two homes. Number 4. Microbial Fuel Cells most ways that electricity is produced involve the use of fuel, and despite improvements in methods that harness renewable energy, researchers are still trying to find further alternatives. Not everything that uses electricity requires huge amounts to function properly, and there are countless technologies that simply need a small electrical charge, such as remote sensors and some types of lighting. In cases like these, a completely different approach to energy provision can be taken, and one of the leading suggestions are microbial fuel cells. These are used to convert chemical energy into electrical energy by the behaviors of microorganisms. The potential has actually been known about for decades, but it's only in recent years that it's become possible to do on a meaningful scale. The basic principle involves using special types of bacteria that contain electrochemically active proteins, and the battery simply transfers this charge to the anode, which allows it to be used. The process only produces low amounts of electricity, but in some cases, this is more than enough. Already, it's being used in some waste management systems and for wireless sensor networks, and it's believed that one day the process could be used to create power stations that are fueled by algae. 
which could supplement other powers when demand spike. Number three, sugar battery. We're constantly being told how bad sugar is for us, and it's linked with the increasing obesity crisis around the world. But in 2007, Sony published a paper theorizing that sugar could actually be used for something far less damaging, to generate electricity in a battery. A few years later, a working prototype was developed, and it's technology that could one day be used in a wide range of applications. The sugar that's used as the fuel is maltodextrin, which can be extracted from various sources such as starch or sugar canes. It's mixed with 13 different enzymes within the battery, and this causes the maltodextrin to oxidize its glucose unit. And one of the side effects of this is the generation of an electrical charge. It's been shown that a sugar battery like this can store up to 10 times as much energy as an equivalent-sized lithium-ion battery, and they're far safer to use, too. Once it's run out, all you need to do is refill the sugary liquid and top up the enzymes, and it'll be ready to produce power again. The only drawback with this technique is that sugar batteries don't generate as much power as released by a lithium-ion one, so if they ever become commercially viable, they won't be useful in every situation. Number 2. Thermal Resonator Most ways of producing electricity make perfect sense to anyone with a basic understanding of physics. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy can't be created or destroyed, but can be changed from one form to another which is why, for example, when you burn coal, you produce heat as the energy stored within it is converted. The mechanism behind how thermal resonators work isn't quite as clear, though, and to most people, they appear to be able to create energy out of thin air, although in reality, it's converted from something most of us aren't even aware exists. There have been, for a while, devices called thermoelectric generators, which produce electricity when one side is a different temperature to the other, but thermal resonators take this to the next step and instead generate power as the result of fluctuating temperatures throughout the day. To do this, it's made from a copper or nickel foam, which is covered by a layer of graphene. It's then infused with a special type of wax that changes between solid and liquid at certain temperatures, and as a result can be used to generate a slight charge. A machine like this is never going to produce enough to power a car or even a smartphone, but it could be used to power sensors or monitoring equipment that only needs a small charge to operate and will be particularly useful in difficult-to-reach places because thermal resonators can, in theory, keep working forever. Number 1. Explosive Lakes When you see a power station floating on water, your initial assumption may be that it's sitting above a series of pipes that are pumping oil from the ground. But this one on Lake Kivu in Rwanda has a very unusual way of producing electricity. The lake itself is one of only three known exploding lakes in the world. They're incredibly dangerous places that contain a deadly mixture of methane and carbon dioxide, which is buried beneath the sediment and is formed from the decomposition of material over hundreds of thousands of years. Temperature changes in the water or seismic activity can release these reservoirs of gases without warning, and the results can be disastrous. In 1984, Lake Nyos in Cameroon did exactly that, and a cloud of invisible noxious gas formed above the lake and the surrounding area, which killed hundreds of people and caused serious environmental damage for miles around. The methane, though, is a potentially valuable fuel, and it's this that the power station in Rwanda harnesses. It extracts the gas that's stored within the lake, and with a maximum output of 26 megawatts, it's hoped to be able to provide up to a third of the country's power requirements. With an estimated 60 billion cubic meters of methane available to be extracted, it could continue providing power for many years to come. Governments of other countries will surely be keeping an eye on how successful the project is, because if it proves to be a success, they'll be looking to harness the gas in their own lakes in the same way. Watch our Machines playlist for more top 15 videos about awesome machines. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best machine videos.